Assalamu alaikum. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to write about processes as one of the types you might encounter in the academic IELTS in test one. Let's watch. Okay, here's the first exercise. One thing that you need to learn is that processes are either natural or artificial. Why do you need to know this piece of information? If a process is natural, you're going to use the active voice. On the other hand, if a process is artificial, you're going to use the passive voice, like this example. A river flows from its source to the ocean. This process is natural. It happens in the nature without the intervention of human beings. Basically, if you don't know the meaning of the word artificial, it means that human beings are involved in this process. Like this example, many electronic goods are manufactured in Japan. This process is artificial. That's why we have to use the passive. To form the passive, you're supposed to use verb to be plus the past participle. So one more time, if a process is natural, like this one, a river flows from its source to the ocean. We use the active. But if it's artificial, like this one, many electronic goods are manufactured in Japan, we use the passive, which is formed by using verb to be plus the past participle. Now, look at this exercise. We have two paragraphs, this one and that one. They are different. First, you need to decide if this process here is artificial or natural. And then you're going to decide if you're going to use the uh, active voice or passive voice. And do the same thing with the second paragraph, which is separate from this one. Decide if this process is artificial or natural. And also decide if you're going to use the active voice or the passive voice. I'll give you some time to think about that. And then I'm going to show you the correct answers. Okay, let's take a look at the answers. Okay, here, now, of course, this is an artificial process. Limestone is the main ingredient of cement. We're talking about the production of cement, and cement is not produced naturally in the environment. Human beings have to be involved, and that's why this is an artificial process. And because it's an artificial process, we're going to use the passive. So number one, we're gonna say, firstly, it's extracted, verb to be plus the past participle from the ground. Then at the factory, it's heated to a high temperature with other, with other ingredients. After that, it's cooled with blasts of cold air. Now this is different. Here in the situation, we're talking about a natural process that happens in nature without any intervention from human beings. And that's why we're gonna use the active voice. When warm air reaches high ground, it rises to a higher elevation, and as a result, it cools. Moisture in the air condenses to form rain. That's it. Here is a different exercise. Now, when describing processes, make sure that the subject and verb agree. Like this example, the sun shines, we have to put this, and the temperature rises, we also have to put this. This is a very simple grammatical rule, yet so many students make this mistake. They don't add S at the end of the verb when the subject is singular. You need to pay attention to that. Okay, so read this paragraph and then put the verbs in the correct form. Decide if you're going to add S or you're not going to add S. Take some time, think about your answers, and then I'm going to show you the correct answers. Okay, let's take a look at the right answers. And you can pause the screen if you need more time, of course. Some rock formations hold, no S, because it's plural, the subject is plural. Large amounts of water. When it rains, S, the subject is singular. The tiny spaces in the rock gradually fill, tiny spaces fill with water, so that the rock becomes S, rock becomes saturated. The top of this saturated zone is called the water table. If long periods of rain occur, periods occur. The water table rises, table rises. If there is no rain, the rock begins, rock begins to dry out and the water table falls. That's it. I hope you can remember to do that in the exam. Now, in this exercise, all you have to do is to learn the following words. Why do you need to learn them? Because if you're talking about a process, then you're talking about steps that happen after one another. And instead of repeating the same words, like, for example, instead of saying after that, after that, after that, you can use these words. You can say first, next, after that, then, following this, subsequently, finally. So these words are very useful, in my opinion. 
You don't have to memorize these words in this order. What you need to know is that you start with the word first and then you end with the word finally, but then you can use these words in any order. For example, you can say first and then after that, and then then, and then next, and then following this and so on. So the order of these words starting from next to subsequent to subsequently can really change. But you, of course, you have to start with the word first and end with the word finally. Like this example. First, the clay is dug up from the ground by a large digger. We're talking about the process of making bricks. Then this clay is placed on a metal grid, which is used to break up the clay into smaller pieces. A roller assists in this process. Following this, sand and water are added to the clay. Subsequently, this mixture takes the shape by using a mold. Next, these bricks are placed in an oven to dry for about 48 hours. After that, the bricks go through a heating and cooling process. They are heated in a kiln at a moderate and then a high temperature, ranging from 200 to 1300. Followed by a, cool, a cooling process in a chamber for two to three days. Finally, the bricks are packed and delivered to their destinations. Okay. Now, how do you write a process essay? Step one, write an introduction. All you have to do is to paraphrase the question. We talked about that in the previous five videos. Step two, write an overall paragraph. Now, how can you write an overall paragraph when it comes to processes? To write an overall paragraph for a process, what you need to do is to mention the number of steps in this process. Like this example, overall, the process of manuf manufacturing cars consists of 10 steps. That's it. So you count the steps and then you write them in the overall paragraph. How do you write the body paragraph? And this is important. What you need to do is to follow the steps one by one without doing anything extra. You're not going to eliminate anything. You're not going to add anything. You're not going to divide the steps into groups. You're not going to do any of the things that we did before when it comes to uh, tables and pie charts and line graphs and, and bar charts. No, you're just going to comment on the steps one by one from the beginning to the end. That's it. That's how it works. You decide first if it's natural or artificial, and then you use the active or passive voice according to that. Follow the steps from the starting point to the end. You may divide one process into two paragraphs if you feel that there are two distinctive stages in the process or more. However, if you feel that all the steps inside the process follow each other in a normal way, just write one long body paragraph. This is acceptable. It's fine. Here is an example. The following chart illustrates the process of extracting energy from coal. Here, take some time first. What you need to do is to write an introduction in which you paraphrase the question, and then an overall paragraph in which you count the steps. And then after that, you're going to write the body paragraphs. And in the body paragraphs, if you feel that this is one continuous process, then write one long paragraph. That's correct, no problems. If you feel that you can divide this process into two parts, then write two body paragraphs. Take some time, write your own essay, and then I'm going to show you uh, a modern answer for this essay. Okay, let's take a look at the modern answer. And of course, you need to pause the screen to continue writing your essay. The diagram shows how electricity can be generated in power station from coal. In a power station from coal. That's the introduction. Overall paragraph. Overall, it can be seen that the process consists of about six stages and it has two distinct routes. Two routes here. This one and that one. First of all, so I was able to divide the process into two routes. If you feel that you can't, it's okay. You can just describe the whole process from the beginning to the end without this division. If you write it without the division, it's acceptable. If you write it with the division, it's also acceptable. First of all, the coal is extracted from mines here and then carried to the surface. After that, it's transported to a power plant, this one, where it's burned in a large furnace. That's the large furnace to which oxygen is added. Oxygen is added here in this process. Uh, from this, raw sin gas is produced at the next stage of the process, harmful substances like carbon dioxide, mercury, and sulfur are removed. Following that, the purified gas is used to drive a gas turbine. The turbine, in turn, powers a generator, producing electricity. That's the turbine, and that's the electricity. Okay. 
The gas turbine also produces hot exhaust gases. This is the other route here. These are then piped to a heat recovery steam generator, this one, which converts heat into steam. Steam. The steam is subsequently used to power a steam turbine, which again is used to generate electricity. That's it. That's how you can write a process essay. This is going to be your homework. The diagram below shows the life cycle of the silk worm and the stages of the production of silk cloth. So what you need to do is to write an introduction in which you paraphrase this question. And then you're going to count the steps here and the steps there. And you're going to use these numbers to write your overall paragraph. And then you're going to look at this process. This is the first process here. That's the first and that's the second. You're going to look at this process and decide if it's natural. Natural means that it doesn't involve any humans or artificial. And according to that, you're going to decide if you're going to use the active voice or the passive voice. And here you're going to do the same thing. You're going to ask yourself, is this a natural process or an artificial process? And according to that, you're going to decide if you're going to use the active voice or the passive voice. So you're going to write one paragraph for this process, another paragraph for that process. These, these are going to be your body paragraphs, and that's it. That's basically it. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. I hope this video was useful. Assalamu alaikum.